It's a new week and a new animal must ascend to the title of Animal of the Week. This week we have the Mole Cricket, continuing on the current trend of animals that are named after two different animals and a strange mixes of the two. We've had the Trilobi Beetle, the Hammerhead Worm, the Mantis Fly, and now the Mole Cricket. You can see where the name comes from with the strange mole-like arms and burrowing behaviour, alongside their strong abdominal resemblance to crickets. Like some of the dual-named animals we've had so far, they're not actually crickets, and probably less surprisingly, they're not moles either. They're very closely related to crickets though, being in the same infraorder, Grylidaea. Mole crickets are a whole genus of insects, and therefore are distributed all over the world, on every continent except Antarctica for rather obvious reasons. There are currently thought to be 107 different species, with more being discovered over time, so there are likely far more than that. Though they are all the same genus and live on six continents, some individual species are invasive to areas where there are already mole crickets. This may seem weird, how can a mole cricket be an invasive species to a place where there are already mole crickets? But different species have different behaviours and diets, and the wrong mix can cause damage to the ecosystem. They usually spend all their time underground and prefer grassy areas or farmland that have a lot of small roots. Mole crickets are omnivores, feeding upon basically any grub, larvae, or invertebrate they may come across that is small enough for them to eat, alongside their plant diet of roots and grass. This is why they live underground in fields and farms, as there are plenty of grass roots to feed upon in these areas. They are actually considered pests to farmers, and anyone trying to keep a nice tidy lawn, as they will eat the roots and damage the soil and feeds, causing plants to die off. Different species' diets have different compositions, with some eating far more plant matter, and others being more active predators who are mainly carnivorous. Most mole crickets live about two years, so the pressure is on to reproduce. The males of the species are the burrow owners, attracting females with their song to come stay at their bachelor pads. The females will dig out a new chamber in the male's burrow for laying her eggs, or the female may fly away and make her own after they have mated. Different species do it differently, and interestingly, only the females can fly. No matter the species, females always lay eggs underground in little chambers in moist soil, as the eggs require moisture to survive. Some species lay 25 eggs, others more, but it usually falls between 25 and 100 small jelly bean shaped eggs. Some females will stay with their eggs until they hatch in the following few weeks, others don't. It all depends on the species. As a mole cricket only lives around two years, multiple clutches of eggs can be laid over a few months, and seen as some of the mole crickets take half their lives to mature, this is a real necessity to their survival. Following on from breeding, mole crickets are adapted to go through incomplete metamorphosis, which is like metamorphosis, but it gets rid of the pupa stage, going straight from larval, or when incomplete metamorphosis takes place, the nymph stage, to the adult over a number of sheddings. This could be for a number of reasons, most likely to develop quicker as they don't live long, and because it requires a lot less energy, as nymphs usually just look like smaller versions of their adult selves, so they don't have to go through a huge and taxing physical change in appearance. Probably the most glaringly obvious adaptation of these mole crickets is their moly front appendages, and it will come as no shock to anyone that they were used for burrowing. This is obviously some pretty great convergent evolution, with moles and insects being rather unrelated, and yet they have a mechanism for digging that looks and works the same. Large hands and strong arms are rather good for digging, probably not surprising to anyone. Finally, they have another cool adaptation that's not so obvious. They can sing, but only the males can. As said previously, they use their song to attract mates. They make their songs by stridulation, where they rub the top of their wings against the bottom of their opposite wing. Their songs can get up to 3.5 kilohertz and cause the ground around them to vibrate rather violently by over 20 centimetres. Well, being a juicy little insect comes with a lot of predators, and living all over the world means a whole host of different animals want to kill and eat you. Birds are the obvious predators alongside other larger insects. In Australia, blue ants will prey on them and make them hosts for their larvae. Human settlement and farming has damaged their populations, with them becoming incredibly rare in the UK. In other places they are thriving, it all depends on where they are in the world. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.